Can you give him a smile? No, I can't give you a smile. Oh, come on. No. Come on. No teeth. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Didn't you get like money for this? Like Shaq, how much did you get? Twenty six million. He got the twenty six million smile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you can edit it, I don't know. My name is Asa Washington. Actually, my name is Keith Washington. Um, I'm from uh, California, San Diego, but I was actually, my family is actually from Texas on my father's side. I was born into, I guess, Southern Baptist, Texas, you know, Bible Belt area. And I was pretty much, I guess you could say Baptist Christian until about 50, till about 16, 17 years old. And at that point, I actually read the Bible. And I became just a someone who believed in God, but um, didn't really have a set religion. I began to explore world religions. I was on a path of, you know, seeking a way, not really a religion. Uh, just do good and, you know, have good come to you. One of the choices I made, which was a mistake, was partying and stuff like this, which led to a car accident. Uh, this car accident... Um, this car accident kind of sent me in the wrong direction because then I began to think that I should live every moment to its fullest and get everything out of life and I kind of went more wild side than mild side. I knew that there was more to life. You know, doing the same thing every night, it just gets boring, the routine got boring. So I decided to go back to university. I became a student activist. I became uh, active on the um, uh, campus politics and things like this, um, which led me to meeting a lot of people, different groups. I was invited to one Muslim event. I attended it. And the speakers actually, in their, just in their normal speeches, they planted the seed, you know, of, okay, this is a religion and a people who are just and seeking justice. I was overwhelmed by the truth. And uh, because of my, where I was raised at, you know, it's an area of manhood. And so if you're a man, you know, and if someone tells you the truth, you submit to it. Whether it's hard or whether it's easy, you submit to it. So I'm thinking to myself, what is, you know, what do I do now? I'm in a dilemma. And like, this is my lifestyle. I'm a student activist. I'm a president of the student union. I have my family, which is I'm not even living near. And I knew that if I accept this religion, my lifestyle has to conform to this religion. So, you know, a lot of the things I'm doing, I'm not going to be able to do. And a lot of the people who I'm dealing with, because they have the same ignorance as I do, they're not going to want to deal with me. And so how will I deal with the administration? How will I deal with these women when I say I can't date? How, how will I deal with my family who's away from me? How do I explain it over a distance? I had to balance all of that. And I just said to myself, um, you know, if, if this is the religion of God, if God has actually, you know, set this path, then he'll take care of it. I think Islam probably changed me in the most is that it made me keep connections that I would have normally broken. People who I would have just, you know, forget about it, it's not worth it. Because of Islam, I said, no, I have to keep this connection. So someone who I would normally not call, I'll call. Someone I would normally not send a letter to, I'll send a letter to. Someone who I would not normally visit, I'll visit. Someone I would not normally smile to, I'll smile to. Humbleness also is something that came from Islam. Because before Islam, if you say anything you want to say, I didn't even have to listen to you, respect you, or anything else. You know, if you, even if you were telling me the truth, you know, it doesn't, you know, in certain aspects, you know, I could just like ignore it. It made me more open to dealing with people and made me more patient in dealing with people and hearing what they actually had. It took away a lot of anger as well. I didn't mention that, but Islam takes away a lot of anger when you're in, um, uh, you know, when you're in a, in a world where you don't think that there's justice and you don't think you're going to get justice, then you try to take that justice. Islam actually says that there's a, a day of judgment which is coming and no one can escape it. And there will always be justice. So if you don't get your, you know, so you don't have to take it in this world. You don't have to be a vigilante. You don't have to go out there and, and do crazy things. You don't have to preach to your family when you convert or to your friends or to your business colleagues. Just you become a Muslim. You live your life as a Muslim. And without preaching even, just by living the example of Islam, you can be the gateway for someone else to find Islam.